Sadhguru, when certain youngsters face problems or difficulties like failures, breakups, loss, etc., a few go for drugs or alcohol instead of solving the problem and finding solutions. So I want to know what is that one hope a person can cling on to even when he is fully shattered from within. Oh, so many broken hearts here who are clapping their hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> when he is fully shattered, what can he do? The question is, do you want to allow yourself to be fully shattered? That's a question. And many things that don't work out in your early life, you will see later on, it is a great blessing <laughs> There are many ways to look at this. Let me tell you this. This happened in 1941. This is just when the Nazi movement was building up in Germany and in some parts of Europe. So one day in Austria, a bunch of German soldiers came, broke into the homes, the Jewish family, a rich family, they broke the home and took away the adults, took… everything was robbed. And these two children, a twelve-year-old girl and an eight-year-old boy were taken away. They were taken to a railway station. This is the month of November, end December kind of time, when it's becoming very cold. So they were kept in the railway station for three days because the trains did not come. Boys, little boys being boys, they started playing football. So they were playing football and uh, then suddenly the train came. The train is not a passenger train, it's a cargo train, the goods train. So when the train came, the soldiers came and rushed everybody into the, the wagons which are there. Everybody got in and the little boy and the girl also got in, but the little boy forgot to wear his shoes. He left his shoes outside and they pushed him into the wagon. So without shoes he came. His sister, a twelve-year-old girl, saw her kid brother coming without shoes and she got mad with him. She held him by the ear, boxed his ears, scolded him nicely, slapped him. He said, you idiot, already we are in enough trouble. Now you come without shoes, because in Germany in winter, no shoes means you may lose your feet. So she's angry about that. In the next station, the boys and girls were separated. After four years, after the war was over, she came out of the concentration camp to find seventeen members of her family, including her little brother, all had vanished. No records, no sign of them. They just evaporated. At that time, the only thing that bothered her was the last few things that she said to her little brother. She loves her brother, but the last few things that she said to him were such terrible things, it rang in her mind and troubled her. These are the last things I told my brother and after that I'm never going to see him, he's gone. So she took a vow. If I speak to anybody in my life, I will speak in such a way, if this is my last word, I will not regret. This one thing transformed her life in such a way. She went on to United States, she died in 2006, she did some phenomenal work, built a hospital somewhere near uh, Chicago, I think. She lived a fruitful life, I'm saying, even if you put through the most horrible situations, either you can come out using that experience as a better human being or you can use the experience to become a horrible mess. So whenever something hurts you, <clears throat> there are two options. You can either become wounded or you can become wise, this is the choice. The more things hurt you early on in your life, the wiser you should have become, isn't it? But unfortunately, most people become wounded. This is simply because they just need an excuse to turn their own intelligence against themselves, that's all. Especially if the world around you turns against you, is it not very, very important that your intelligence stands up for you? <laughs>